Welcome first time listeners and returners to the Sports Deli, where everyone deserves a seat at the table. What about f***ing Colin? Why does he not have a f***ing job? Because he's still being white balled. Why is Tom not speaking out about that? He should be his biggest f***ing ally. And he hasn't said one f***ing thing. It's really important to me to highlight women and women of color. And so I'm excited to share space with you today. Thanks. A lot of people that have come on this show, I don't know why, they've gotten some good f***ing jobs afterwards. Jim Rome in the jungle. It's right here in the sports deli, baby. We got some good ass karma right here. Let's go. <laughs> I love oh, it. Oh, man. I love it. We hope you enjoy today's show, everyone. Hey, everyone. Who? Host and producer of the Sports Deli Podcast. Let's get right into it. This is a special edition with regards to Jerry Jones, owner of the Dallas Cowboys, and ESPN personality Stephen A. Smith. I've tried to let the situation that I'm going to talk about today ride for a couple of days because if I've learned one thing, as I've said before in my specials, especially with regards to Kyrie Irving and Dave Chappelle, uh, it's important to give grace, get all the facts, and after a couple of days, I think you've had enough information to comment and have an opinion, formulate a thoughtful opinion response to what's transpired. And so there's nuance and a lot of layers to a lot of things that we typically talk about in the sports deli, which is the intersection between race and sports, mental health, leadership, equality, social injustice, and white privilege. My aim is to listen much more than I speak, but there are times when I do specials when I feel very strongly about something. And what I heard from Jerry Jones is concerning, and what I heard from Stephen A. Smith is concerning, especially from Stephen A. Smith. If you're not aware of what I'm referring to, Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, was recently shown in a photograph in 1957, along with other white students that were blocking six black students from entering North Little Rock High School. And Stephen A. Smith, who likes Jerry Jones, which is, I think, a big problem with this because he has a blind spot and he didn't separate himself with regards to his relationship with Jerry Jones. And so that is my biggest issue right now. So I want you to think about it from this standpoint. You personally, as a white person, were in that photograph. What do you think the correct response should be? And so Jerry Jones basically said that he was curious. And that is what Stephen A. Smith is defending that was first reported in the Washington Post and I can wrap my head around that I can wrap my head around a lot of things that happened in the 20s 30s 40s 50s 60s 70s 80s and maybe even the 90s but how Jerry Jones responded and what Stephen A. Smith has failed to recognize is concerning it's to me unacceptable so the first thing that Jerry Jones should have done that everyone asked Kyrie to do was to condemn a film that didn't even recognize the Holocaust. And so Jerry Jones, being now in his 80s, I believe, should have condemned it, shouldn't have justified it, shouldn't have been defensive about it, shouldn't have said that he was curious, he should have denounced anything and everything that has to do with racism, and segregation and he didn't do that the first thing that came out of his mouth was defensive and an explanation do you think the people that looked at that photo don't understand that it was in the 50s and we understand that during those times you may not have had the inner resiliency or the courage to stand up to other whites like we get it so that's insulting you didn't even have to say anything about that how about how heroic those black and brown children were. How about that should have been the first thing that came out of your mouth? Do you know how difficult it must have been? Do you know how difficult it must have been for them, not only in this moment, how scary it must have been for them, but how the rest of their lives went because they had to live during these times, and then how any of their family members after that must have felt Do you understand anything about generational trauma? So like I said, this is a layered issue. It's a complex issue, and I don't want to oversimplify it. But to me, 
What I was looking for was a statement that showed that you understood how incredibly courageous these kids were. Maybe at the end you can explain what you were doing there. I mean, how insulting is it for all the people that have fought for decades for equality, like a Dr. Richard Lapchick, who when I mention his name, most of you, if not all of you, have absolutely no idea who I'm talking about, who behind the scenes have done so much for the black and brown community. He doesn't do podcasts. He's not in the, the limelight. He doesn't care to be in the limelight. He does his report. He has been fighting for decades after he formed a relationship with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at a summer basketball camp. And if you want to learn more about him, then either listen to my podcast with Dr. Richard Lapchick or do your homework. You can find out a lot about him online. It's insulting to someone like John Lewis. It's insulting to someone like Stacey Abrams, to Bill Russell, to Muhammad Ali, and more recently with an Atan Thomas, a Colin Kaepernick, and some of the white people that stand up publicly to the injustices and the inequalities that still happen in this country. It's insulting to the Mahmoud Abdul Raoufs. Rex Chapman has been very outspoken, former NBA player. J.J. Redick has been very outspoken, but too conservative in my mind. Greg Popovich, Steve Kerr. So your, in my eyes, lack of a correct response with regards to this photograph is just deplorable. And it just shows me how tone deaf you are and how out of touch you are. And for Stephen A. Smith to back you in terms of the fact that you were 14 years old, instead of saying, you know what, Jerry, whether you took him aside or you said it publicly, this is disgusting. I understand you were 14 years old, but you should be doing everything in your power to do much, much more than you're doing. And it should start with this photograph. It should have started after Colin Kaepernick, but it didn't. Jerry Jones has never hired a black head coach. That's concerning in and of itself. He has never done enough with regards to the Rooney rule. All he's cared about is businesses. He makes so much money. He has so much influence outside of the NFL with regards to hosting the Big 12 championship at his multi-billion dollar facility that he has there in Texas. The influence that he has in other areas from real estate to other business endeavors. And he's not using his platform. Can you, can you imagine if this had to do with a Jew and there were a bunch of Nazis around? Do you think the response would be different? Jerry Jones is getting a bullshit-ass pass. I can wrap my head around the 14-year-old stuff, but I will not give him a pass. I refuse to give him a pass for him not using his platform, for not apologizing for being in that photo for denouncing it, for condemning it the same way that we wanted to condemn Kyrie for not putting the link that he tweeted about Hebrews to Negroes in context, like you would a CD with explicit lyrics, like you would do with a rated R movie. Jerry Jones should have said, number one, those kids were so courageous and unbelievable, and I wish I would have been there to support them and to be the one that told all of those people to get the fuck out of the way and let them through. Instead, I understand that you didn't stand up against the machine. But the least you could do now, the least you could do now with your platform, what's it going to hurt? Are you going to lose any business? Are you going to lose your team? But you know what? To me, you're going to lose the respect of a lot of people in the, in the white and the black community who are in this space, who understand it, by A, number one, not giving credit to those incredible black young men, and number two, for not doing the exact same things that we expected of a black man when the false narrative of Kyrie Irving and Dave Chappelle were that they were anti-Semitic. It is abs The hypocrisy is palpable. It is absolute and utter bullshit. And it is insulting to all the people that have fought for social injustice and systemic racism and people that believe that white privilege is a thing. And Jerry, you are exercising your white privilege on a silver spoon. How about those cowboys? 
And I could wrap my head around it before Colin Kaepernick. I can wrap my head around some stuff before George Floyd, but not after George Floyd. There was something that clicked with too many white people, and the fact that you are so tone deaf, it your silence with regards to these types of things and your defensiveness is deplorable. It is disgusting. And the fact that Stephen A. Smith is not calling you out on it. Should you be canceled? What's in your heart? Don't know. But I don't think you deserve to be running an NFL franchise. I just don't. I think that you should sell it. I think there should be more black and brown people and women in the black and brown community owning NFL franchises and NBA franchises and Major League Baseball franchises and professional soccer and boxing has, you know, no real person running things. They're more promoters, but, you know, there should be more black and brown people in ownership positions. And there's not because of people like you. Because people like you will not stand up and use your platform and use your white privilege to stand up and you justify what that photograph showed, which is your white privilege. And you're getting a pass. And you're getting a pass from Stephen A. Smith. And Stephen A. has said some outlandish things over the years. But I just cannot for the life of me understand how you are not in alignment with some of the things that Kyrie and Dave Chappelle, Kyrie in particular, were asked to do. Like the fuck? Like, Kyrie still hasn't played. So what did we ask Kyrie to do? To condemn it? To donate some bullshit amount of money to a cause? Jerry, are you going to donate to a, a black and brown cause? Are you going to go through sensitivity training? Are you going to go through diversity, equality, and inclusion training? Any kind of racism training? Are you going to meet with black leaders like Jim Trotter, maybe, from the NFL Network, or Troy Vincent from the NFL office, or Doug Williams? No, that's beneath you. You wouldn't do that, would you, Jerry? You wouldn't meet with black leaders. This whole thing makes me literally sick to my fucking stomach. Because you know as well as I do, if this was a Jewish situation, like I explained earlier, or if this was a black individual or a brown individual, that there would be a completely different reaction. We just saw it. We j literally just saw it. And I could wrap my head around a 14-year-old being curious about wanting to go get a pack of gum from the store and shoplifting it to see if he could get away with it. And I can even wrap my head around in the 50s, this bullshit. And then you say, <laughs> and, then, and then you say, it's not funny, but then you say you want to be the first in line for diversity. <laughs> like the fuck? You ever heard the saying that actions speak louder than words? Man, <laughs> don't insult us like that, Jerry, Jera. Just don't. But where are the players condemning not only the photo, but his response and Stephen A. Smith's response, which I haven't seen much, much pu pushback at all. It's insulting to so many, so many civil rights activists who have lost their family members, who have lost their lives, who have lost their livelihoods, who have lost their jobs and their homes for standing up when this is a white issue, when the white people like Jerry Jones should be standing up for social injustice and white privilege, and he should be talking about this in a completely different light. The narrative should be completely different. Like Stephen A. Smith's going to go on television all the time and criticize people like Kwame Brown. Like you're going to criticize Kwame Brown? For what? Like literally for what? And you're not going to criticize Jerry Jones? You fucking serious right now? Like that is so mind-blowing to me. And so what we have is a situation that I just explained. You have the Dallas Cowboys playing good football. And so people are going to turn a blind eye to the situation. And it's sad, man. It is sad. And the uh, sponsors should pull out. The advertisers should pull out. The television stations and the networks should comment on it. Uh, Big conglomerates like Nike should be commenting on this situation and holding him more accountable, and the players shouldn't play. They shouldn't play. But that would take food off of their tables now, wouldn't it? I mean, it's bad enough that Tom Brady and Eli Manning and Peyton Manning and Aaron Rodgers and Tony Romo and Troy Aikman and the major white influencers in professional football do not speak out about social injustice enough. There is a double standard. There is not. There is a. There is a lack of outspokenness from those guys. For whatever reason, I don't understand it. But Greg Popovich and 
Steve Kerr and J.J. Reddick and Rex Chapman, who have been at the forefront uh, in terms of the most influential white people that have spoken out about this stuff, they're not going to move the needle. And if you don't think that sports figures can change elections and influence elections and make a difference, you're wrong. And I use this analogy all the time in, in this, this proof of the WNBA and what they did. The thoughtful, collective effort to get Kelly Loeffler out as the owner of the Atlanta Dream. She lost the election. Raphael Warnock won the election, and then they won another uh, seat, the Democrats did, because of the 144 women of the WNBA with a T-shirt and not saying Kelly Loeffler's name and having a strategic plan to mobilize and come together because there are strength in numbers. 144 women, 144 mostly black women came together to change an election. And if you don't think, uh, how many players are in the NFL, 1,500? If you don't think if the NFL players striked and said, we are not playing this week until Jerry Jones denounces, condemns, donates, whatever, goes through sensitivity training, whatever, goes through equity, inclusion, and diversity training, meets with black leaders. Is Jerry Jones going to be suspended for six games, eight games? Man, <laughs> it's unfucking believable So I'd be interested to know what you guys think about this and the fact that Stephen A. Smith is pushing the same narrative, giving him a pass. Man, it's so insulting. It's so insulting to generations of black and brown people who have faced from slavery to now what they still have to go through and not educating people that systemic racism still occurs, that white privilege is still a thing, and that we need to do more as white people. And it's not up to black people to educate white people, and it's not up to black people to change this narrative. I'm not talking about the issues that are going on in the black and brown community. That's not in my lane. I've heard hundreds of hours of discussions about those types of things also. But unless I have a guest on my show that's going to discuss the internal issues that are going on in the black and brown community, that's not for me to discuss. I'm talking about the white or the white Jewish perspective and giving you what I feel is unfair between two situations in particular, or three if you include Dave Chappelle, Kyrie, and what just happened with Jerry Jones. This is Hootie Hoop from the Sports Daily Podcast. This has been a special edition with regards to Jerry Jones and Stephen A. Smith and what happened recently with the photograph that came out showing Jerry Jones, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, in a photo in 1957, curious about what was going on, that he didn't really know what was going on. And his first response was anything but condemning it and what heroes those six black and brown young men were. How terrified those kids must have been. So your voice matters, everybody. Tweet something, retweet something, duet something, stitch something, do a video, repost something, add something to your story, like something. There's a lot of things that you can do. And when we get a collective group of people that do those types of things, it changes the vibration, it helps us to mobilize better, helps educate people on what's really going on, just bring the proof, man. Just bring the receipts. Bring your receipts. And don't put out false information. Until next time, much love. Peace. Boy, that was phenomenal. Great job and much love to everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us. Remember, Black Lives Matter. Stop the bullying. Stop the Asian hate. Contact your local and state politicians for any inequalities for any individual or any group that's being marginalized. Also, everyone, we want to raise awareness for those individuals that are currently imprisoned for nonviolent offenses, in particular those with long-term sentences that are disproportionate in particular to those people in the black and brown community. And I want to send a shout out to 40tons.co. 40 Tons is a socially conscious cannabis brand and they're a social enterprise using the regulated cannabis industry to fight injustice, in particular for cannabis prisoners. So check them out again at 40, the number four, the number zero, tons, plural, 40tons.co because what they're doing in the cannabis space and being a socially conscious 
company is truly incredible and uh, they have my full support and also wanted to remind all of you if you're having a tough time you can always call the suicide prevention lifeline and that number is 800-273-8255 that's 800-273-8255 and now you can call 988 that's it all you got to do is dial 988 from any phone and they are available 24 7 365 days a year and if you want to follow me on social media or check out other episodes of this amazing sports deli podcast or any of my other podcasts go to my link tree at linktree backslash mike hootner and if you'd like to support us at the sports deli we'd love to have you either make a one-time donation or Feel free to make a donation monthly, either $0.99 cents a month, $4.99 a month, or $9.99 a month. If you have uh, questions about that, send me an email again to thesportsdeli at gmail.com, and I will send you the link on how you can do that. Uh, you can also find it at the bottom of every podcast on Spotify or uh, Apple Podcasts. There's a link at the bottom to support the show. Please check, check out our website at thesportsdelipodcast.com. Make sure that we continue the conversations with regards to three strikes and you're out and mandatory minimums, especially people that are in jail, for nonviolent offenses. So those things need to change. And remember, gents and ladies, please remember to do your monthly self-breast examinations. And remember, guys, this afflicts about 1,500 men annually with about a third of those resulting in death. So we want to make sure that we do our monthly self-breast examinations, both men and women. And guys, remember to do your self-testicular examinations every month as well. Until next time, remember it takes a village. I'm Hootie Hoot. This has been a production of Hootie Hoot Productions. Thank you for joining us in the sports deli where everyone deserves a seat at the table. Remember it takes a village. Much love, everybody.